And welcome back to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two of my good brothers here. We have the we have the lo we have the longest lost mem lost member of of Hokuto Shinken, good brother Joel, and we me. and we have the man of a thousand runes and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother <laughs> Xanatrix. I hope to have a piece of the library bigger than time zones soon. <laughs> <laughs> it it is part, this is part two of our little class warfare exper experiment from oh, from a while back. In fact, we did, as memory serves, we did that particular episode back on August thirtieth. And up at, and with when we did that, we mainly covered the martial styles. The magic styles, the other styles, quote unquote, and the and the support styles, and we decided to skip the transformation styles. The next batch that I have is the weapon styles, and I would I would like to I would like and the first one that I have is um the dual axes Tang's vengeance. I like that it has a little name like that, Tang's Vengeance. Which, even though even though it's it's slow, it's considered by some to be the best weapon style the, in the core game. Ooh. Um, by some, others say it's dual swords, but that's just because dual swords are fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fast can mean a lot in a game like this. So let me go. Let me go into the descri the description of the thing. When Emperor Fong died without an heir, the empire became fractured and divided. After years of war, Tang the Merciless rose to be the forerunner in the battle for the contested throne of the Jade Empire. Tang's own father betrayed him into the hands of his enemies, fearing that his son's violent ways would ruin the empire. Rumor has it that before he fled into exile, Tang the Merciless used these very axes to cut off his father's head. These devastating axes remain extremely sharp even after hundreds of years of use. Wow, cool. I I love stuff like that. I love I love the whenever there's a martial arts style that's that's based on a legend. Ah. It's the sweetest plum. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's one of the advantages that uh, Legends of the Wulin kinda has over uh over the current iteration of Lone Wolf Fist is that they actually were tapping like Actual mythology and like like well worn wuxia sources and things like that. So they usually had styles that kind of grew out of stories, and hey, I love that. I think that's I need to do a little bit more about that. Anyway, so okay, tell me about the style as far as like actually playing it though. Um, like when you when using the thing, it is you have a lot of you have a lot of slow sweeping mo sweeping motions, but a, mm -hmm. but a fair a fair amount of reach. That's scans. It's kind of how axes actually work too. Whenever you fight with them. Yeah, and these are um, these are bat the, I'd say battle axes with a little bit more of with a little bit more of a half. I'd say. I'd say about ha I'd say about a about half a foot's more handle. Mm -hmm. Um. Not so not so much handle that they become Dane axes, but not far off. Oh, uh, it's a lot of handle. <laughs> Dane but I mean, a lot of handle means a lot of handle. leverage, so. Mm -hmm. uh, but e even so, it's it's still it's still two it's still um it's still two axes that you're that you're wield that you're dual wielding. And yeah, in a lot of the animations, there's this idea of just thro of just throwing all your all your weight into swinging the thing. Does it actually translate into like a larger damage in the style? It's like output wise, or is it only like certain moves? It does. Ha I would say, I would the. Th I'd say I'd say when it comes to damage, yes, and also the fact that um, if I w if I were to translate this into a fighting game, I'd say that I'd say that Tang's Vengeance has um super armor. If you're familiar with that term. Oh, no, I'm not. Um. Super armor in fighting games refers to any move that is not in, that is that ha, that does not have its animation interrupted when you're taking damage. 
You still oh, take, okay. You still take the damage, but you don't get knocked out of the animation. It's got Zangief chest hair. <laughs> I always thought of that as the uh, the parry this, you fucking casual of fighting games. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I get I get it conceptually. That's actually it, and that's um. That's something I don't have a lot of room for in this. Like, knockback isn't such a big, significant chunk of this game that uh, it influences every fight. Usually, usually the the reward of landing a blow on somebody is the damage you do. Mm -hmm. um, and a few powers give you something like knockback. But, like, in a fighting game, knockback is a huge part of how you play it. Like, you, you rely on changing the space when you and your opponent to set up different attacks and um, get, get back to where you're dominating in the the area of the battlefield like yeah in an actual proper like 2d 3d fighting game movement and be able to move the opponent is huge so super armor is one of those things where i understand what it is for fighting games it doesn't translate as perfectly as i'd like because the the value of moving your opponent is, is so different in this game however i still think there's there's room for it because uh, there are effects that knock you back um, and, and beyond just attacks. I mean, like there's there's all kinds of stuff that people can do to you or, or situations where like you're fighting. It's a landslide or in a hurricane or a sandstorm or in a collapsing building and being able to just either like with your forward momentum, not have to worry about that for a little bit like that alone can make a, a attack worth a little bit more prana. So I want to add an element like that into this one. Um, I think uh, for the weapons themselves, I'd probably, since I don't really have axes specifically called out, I'd probably do something that was halfway between a sword and uh, uh, like a, a dual weapon where you're like fighting with two hands. That way you get both uh, hitting a lot more frequently and also hitting a lot harder whenever you do hit. So that works pretty good. And the whole killing edge thing, I like the way it's represented with swords by just adding a rank to an attack. It's kind of this blend of deadliness and skillfulness. I think that works pretty good for this. It, it's a little, it's a little straightforward, but I, I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. I would like to see in this style attacks that are also kind of defenses, where like there's this area around you where you hit stuff, and if something enters it, you could get hurt. Um, that probably mechanically manifests like a shield, but it might wind up being like an attack that like hits really hard in an arc, like everything in an area, and then just sticks around like a shield with counterattack. Um, I've got stuff like that, so it'd be nifty to to have a have a style that kind of pushed so far into its offense it sort of became a defense. And axes sort of work like that, where you have this arc around you, and if you're swinging it around, where if anybody gets close to you, they get axed. So it kind of gives you control of that space in your immediate surrounding, and especially with the handedness of these axes, it seems like they have a significant amount of reach. So. Probably blend that into it too. I, I don't think I'd go super fancy with this style. It doesn't seem like it's a super fancy style. I think I think mostly it's effective and it's uh, got a good sense of like offense and like forward kinetic motion. And it's not super hard to translate those things into this game. So actually, it might be a little bit too strong for all of that. It sounds like it, has, it doesn't really have a, a built-in drawback anywhere. That might just be because it it as a, as a inspiration source. Axes don't have a lot of built-in drawbacks. They're pretty cool weapons. Um, I might add something where it's a little easier to disarm. The, the drawback with an axe is if you ever start losing your kinetic motion, like if it gets buried in something, the ground or a shield or an ill-placed tree, um, it's not doing its job of defending you, and it certainly isn't threatening anyone. So it kind of leaves your cheese out in the wind for a second. So I might have something where it's a little easier to disarm you, or it's it's it, enemies could like redirect your attack into something and potentially get your weapons stuck. Um, it wouldn't be too difficult to, to have something like that in there. Yeah. Um, just to get it a, a, a slightly better, I guess, feel for, um, for how the axes look, I uh, did, I'm about to send the picture of that into the council. Okay, I'm gonna pull that up. Those pull are what Tang's Revenge look like in the game. Oh man, They're cool looking. Yeah, especially for a 2003 game. Oh, only 2003. I think it was 2003. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, those are neat. Um, I should note that it that um Tang's Vengeance is the in um in style is the level two version of the thing. The f first level is Death and Agony, which is the axes used by the Black Whirlwind. Wow. <laughs> yeah, the the axes used by by the Black Whirlwind are uh are even more herc and ridiculous in ways. Um, that is also going to be in the council here. There you go. Ooh. Then again, the, then again, whirlwind is is very is very straightforward about things. <laughs> He's very big, and when you beat him up, he doesn't believe he could have lost you. I know those axes are F's. Which is one's a backwards F. <laughs> maybe maybe it's give maybe it's given the grade to every fable game after the first one. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if uh, Bioware and, and Lionhead had a big rivalry at that time. I don't think I don't think they did I don't think they did. I just wanted to take the piss out of Molyneux. <laughs> I mean, Molyneux oh, does that well enough himself, though. I mean, do we really have to? Do we really have to hit a man while he's down? Yeah, I, the guy has a one of a kind pistol called the Molyneux that points straight back at his testicles every time he fires it. You heard me, Peter That's... Molyneux. Mm -hmm. Never good with a gun. That or was a. Uh, that was that was your uh, your Q monk to say no. We don't hit a man while he's down. No, we kick him because that's easier. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, it's good times. Okay, I, uh, that's enough of Axis. What's the next weapon style? Okay, next is Crimson Tears, which is the which is a double which is um double sabers. Um, yep, it's the upgraded version of the two sword style that you get from Eyes of the Dragon. Yeah. Cool. Um, let me let me let me. Uh, I got the images. Don't worry. That's what the Crimson Tears look like. Mm -hmm. This is like a dervish style, or is it like a two huge heavy swords style? Those are uh, Chinese fencing sabers, so it's more dervish. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see, the description goes, The inscription on these unique sabers is written in a long-forgotten dialect. The writing, deciphered by, so by a scholar Shao Shen many years ago, reads... The innocent are cut down with the guilty. The brave die beside the craven. The blades do not weep for the dead. Rumor has it that the crimson tears have ended more lives than the great drought itself. Despite centuries of use, these sabers are as sharp and deadly as the day they were forged. Ooh, that's crazy. These seem more like magic items to me, less like fighting styles. This is one of those things where you pick them up and you're just this whirlwind of carnage. <laughs> killed more people than the great drought like I don't, I don't know a ton about how many people in china died in that particular drought but like knowing china was probably an inhumanly high number so that's kind of terrifying um i was i i don't know i i almost feel like so do, do you just like get these magic weapons and then you learn styles because you have the weapons like how does it work in the game the the weapon and the style are one and the same by you okay. in um now in the, in the pc version your styles are allocated to to um to the to the numbers on your keyboard um whereas in the xbox version um it was it was allocated to the d-pad you just press you just press a direction on the d-pad and you'd automatically switch to that style all right yeah, it's almost kind of feels like the way um i want to say exalted does weapons where like you get a magic weapon and then over time like you get more powerful and it gets more powerful mm -hmm. yeah my weapons aren't quite that uh like i i really feel like when you get tiger soul it should be tiger soul you know like it shouldn't be like baby junior tiger soul then you'll unlock real tiger soul later i feel like if you pick up these swords they should be immediately cutting through steel and like ripping apart like tanks and battleships and shit like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yes, like, traditional Wuxia Chancha tropes there. No, I I don't have any fucking patience for leveling up my sword. Like I want my sword to be cool when I pick it up. Mm -hmm. 
I don't... Does that make me a bad game designer? It probably does. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't... I don't spare a lot of thought I to balance, I, I guess. Com- I don't completely dis- I don't completely disagree with it. It's it's one of the it's it's ultimately a case of what of what your goals are. I do th- I do think that a lot of people look at magic items the same way you'd look at magic equipment in Diablo. Whereas the philosophy that I've had with ma- with magic items, I'd say I'd say the the best weeb analog I can think of is the noble phantasms in Fate. <laughs> Why um, you gotta bring up something as fucked as the Nasu verse now? <laughs> because God has cursed me for my hubris, and my work is never finished. <laughs> That'd be why. That's always the answer. Don't don't worry. That's always the answer. <laughs> the re the reason I the reason I bring that kind of thing up is. A no is said noble phantasm is a rep is a representation of the legend of that of that partic- of a particular um, heroic spirit, and um, they all have different levels of power and usages. But there's no like clear winner except for in Fate Grand Order with the noble phantasms that can basically shut down all their noble phantasms. But we don't get into that. That's just now you're really asking for it if you get into Fate Grand Order, but uh, <laughs> I like, know what Pandora's box I was unlocking here. It's interesting. Well, well, there there are different different ideals behind what a noble phantasm does based on the legend it came from. Mm. Uh, for for example, the noble phantasm of King Arthur. Everybody can name that noble phantasm. Everybody knows what Excalibur is. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's a it, it's an anti what what do they call anti unit the ultimate anti unit wep- um noble phantasm yeah for if 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 used to its utmost effect it can cut any one person down period oh, wow. end of story I mean it is Excalibur so but that doesn't but is that is that more or less powerful than one of Medusa's uh. Noble phantasms, which is a an, an anti fort is a fortress type noble phantasm, which locks down the area and locks down everybody's abilities in it. It's it's it. it there's no yeah contest. You're apples to oranges there here. Yeah, and so that's that's what I guess is the best way to go for it with when considering the the point the point that I was trying to make before you got before we got lost in the weeds <laughs> is that. When picking up when picking up even a single magic item should be a big damn deal in a in a given story. It should be the equivalent of um find of finding the finding the shri- finding the shrine to Krom in the in the first Conan the Barbarian movie and finding the Atlantean sword, or well well this will be this will be one that's obvious for anybody finding the Master Sword in um a link to the past. Oh. God damn that uh that song was the that song that little jingle that plays when you pull out the master sword in the lost woods was so iconic that they used it again in Ocarina of Time. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And, um, and and then years later, meme culture would get, meme culture would would um would would ruin it in the form of I would hit it so hard I I would hit it so hard whoever pulls me out of th- whoever pulls me out of that get, jumps forward 7 years in time which is just a variation of I'd hit it so hard whoever pulled me out of that would be crowned the next king of England <laughs> but it is it is hint- so yeah well I mean going back to go back to the two swords mm-hmm. that can cut through anything like it's it can be tough to represent that in a game that isn't just in a way that's stupid powerful or or like too useful but not necessarily interesting because your first place to go could just be oh you ignore any hardness and armor so you're cutting through stones and steel and armor and it's it's no big deal that's really cool effect wise um and it's extremely utilitary it's also kind of dull that doesn't have like the flash that i want to give something that is that kind of backstory behind it 
the same time, if you add too many powers to it, you risk doing the EX3 thing, where your sword is cooler than you. And um, that's not really awesome in a game about being personally very cool. So it's going to be tough with that kind of stuff. So, uh, the way I usually see that done in, in Wuxian Chanxia, and since you're using that as one of your primary uh, inspirations, um, sword Taoists cultivating the will of the sword itself until they can eventually manifest swords from their own willpower and fly on them. Now your weapon is as cool as you because it is you. <laughs> so these, these Crimson Tears, if, you, if we decided to adapt them, you could make them an intrinsic part of someone's Tao. Maybe, maybe rather than a style, attribute them to some sort of setting character. Or they could just be effectively a martial arts manual in magic sword form. So initially they just do something fucking rad, like cutting through anything, which is great, except they're not, that alone is not going to push you far up enough on the Kung Fu ladder to be ridiculously cooler than yourself. But as you learn them and become one with them, you can learn new techniques that you can only use with them. That might be a little... Maybe a little Achilles Healy, because somebody can smash them out of your hands and then suddenly you're enormously weaker. Um or, I don't know. Like that's you can take that risk. Or when you get high enough, they become a weapon that can't be taken from you because they're a part of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just summon it back to your hand or just like just because you destroyed the physical version, you didn't destroy its soul, and then there's just another and Then you get a hand. soul reaver then you get a soul reaver situation. <laughs> oh shit. Raziel has the Soul Reaver's spiritual form, and Kane has the physical form. Oh, God. I haven't thought about that game in a while. One of my favorites, though. I really like Let's that not, game. I love the Legacy It only King. takes me ten heartbeats to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> ten breaths of time, and you shall be on the ground. Is that, be is that better or worse than, he than, um, than, heroes, than Heroes' Death in Ten Paces? Um, death in ten breaths uh, intimates ten seconds at most. Mm -hmm. Um, in Wuxian Shansha, ten, death in ten breaths is usually something like two seconds. It's like, why is it two seconds? Time dilation. God damn it! You have no idea fighting how fast at those I can speeds. breathe. You would know have <laughs> my ten breaths are faster than your ten breaths, but why? Because <laughs> I'm moving faster than you. Duh. Duh. Oh. Okay. That then that then begs the question, if you're breathing faster than them, can you can you uh can you choke them out? <laughs> Just by breathing. Well, if, you, <laughs> if you wanna have if you wanna have them make the Atlanta challenge, I guess you can. <laughs> Just like the idea of fool, I've already breathed all the oxygen in this room, now suffocate. You just got here. I <laughs> ah, so dumb. It's great. Air, air making at its <laughs> finest. I would pass judgment, but give, but given the given the fact that um, given the fact that given given the fact that it, that all that Alden's fin Alden's finisher is. What is what is weaponizing the water in someone's body? I can't talk. <laughs> okay, Mister, I'm gonna piss off the DM by using heat or cool water in a meter on a single target to heat or cool all the water in its blood. <laughs> dies of a br dies of a stroke because you increased the heat of his blood to boiling. Well, there was that. Sp there was a first circle spell in Exalted called Blood of Boiling Oil, so. You tell me which is worse. Uh, we're getting in the weeds. Let's get back to yeah. let's get back to the rails, guys. Yeah. Um I'm skipping Mirabelle because it's a It's gun. a gun. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a gun given to you by John Cleese. Um I'm also skipping the improvised weapon, which is twin hams. But why? Being hammy is your forte. <laughs> Oh wait, no. Excuse me. I have to take my title back. Being hammy is my forte. Yeah, but it's imp it's improvised weapons. I know improvised the, hands. the improvised comedy is all hammy. The, the that's all, folks. 
I said hammy, not porky. Uh, porky is made of ham in its early infantile stages. Do we know if Porky's actually made of ham? Does, <laughs> just because he looks like a pig doesn't mean he is a pig. Um, <laughs> whenever, actually well behaved. So. Whenever, 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 um, Porky is Porky is brought up, I'm all, I'm always having to think of. Okay, are we talking about the Looney Tunes character? Or are we talking about the film? Or the or are we talking about the restaurant from where I grew up? In this case, it's definitely Looney Tunes since he did the outro that Porky Pig does. Mm -hmm. um, Context, it'll save you. So next is the is the um, long sword, which um, which should um, should I go with Zan? Should I go with the description of Fortune's favorite dragon sword or demon sword? Fortune's favorite probably has the best flavor text, but Demon Sword is the top version, so to be on you there. Well, there's not much of a description for Demon Sword, so let me let me look up um, Dragon Sword, and let me also tab in Fortune's favorite. Just so I ha just so I ha just so I have those. In the in the prep, just in ca just in case. So I have the fortune's favorite description right in front of me. Let's hear it. All right. <clears throat> this longsword bears the mark of Shining Fortune, the blacksmith of the gods. Shining Fortune's weapons were so finely crafted that the gods forbade him from creating weapons for anyone but them. When his son was enlisted to subdue the barbarians from the west, Shining Fortune forsook his oaths and forged this marvelous longsword for his son. The gods cursed Shining Fortune for breaking his oath, and he was never again able to produce weapons of any worth. Still, the blade he made for his son never experienced defeat. It is truly Fortune's favorite. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> That is pretty righteous. And I, I like luck-based powers a lot. I think they're an untapped source of anime weeaboo bullshit. Um, and I say that because the, I've seen a lot of long, very venomous threads about how what are ostensibly anime characters and Exalted should definitely be wearing helmets because it's so easy to get your head destroyed. And that'll put you have to put it over your cool anime haircut. you got to have a helmet on. It's like, yes, okay. There is some there friction is between. There is an entire subsection in the GM's chapter called "and I'll form the head." You're kind. You're kind. You need to pick your own bat. You need to pick the proper battles, people. I mean, that's the thing. There is friction between a game as a simulation and a game as an exercise in creativity. Like this is reality. If the, like, if even D &D has it. If this was if this was some if this was something that was aiming for. Some, for some degree of um of of that of that kind of realism, like say, like say chivalry and sorcery, maybe I'd be willing to buy that. I don't but... know, it, it's it's tent pulling a very important concept, which is you should be able to do what you would expect physics to do. Things should act kind of like you'd expect them to act, and then there will be some divergences based on like the exceptions of this world. Yeah, but like yeah. It, it can be tough to wrap your mind around the idea that it is more tactically influential to have kick-ass spiky anime hair than it is to wear just a piece of metal over your face. It can be kind of hard to wrap your head around, but you can find places within your setting to make it work. For example, if having a kick-ass hairstyle magically made you too lucky to die of a head wound, then you get the best of both worlds. Because now everybody should have the coolest fucking hairstyle possible. And it actually makes sense that the most elaborate hairstyles would then dominate because everyone's effectively wearing the best helmet they can at that point. I, uh, I, I actually would like to point out Ghost of Tsushima here for this. Because um, yeah. there are some pretty dope hairstyles that you can, that you can put on uh, Jean while you're playing the game. But uh, they, they made most of the armor and stuff cool enough where you want to put on the headgear like especially yeah. any of the any of the mengu which are the face masks that are made of metal oh, um, because you get you still get your hair coming out the back 
but you have a fucking ninja face mask on. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, there's 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 that. Plus, some of the samurai helmets are just goddamn cool. Let's let's not even let's not even uh, don't even step. Samurai headgear was fucking righteous. Really, they had a great sense of martial style. So, but the the key thing there's. I'd also be remiss if I did if I didn't if I didn't point out um the if I didn't point out the fact that um in a in a game like Exalted one of the key, one of the key things in die rolling is the stunt rule <laughs> that is yeah. rewarding you for levels of ridiculousness. This is this the reason, cool this, is the reason why, this is the reason why I say why I say pick your battles. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Exalted is Exalted is the White Wolf um, storytelling system of Weeaboo Fightin'. We already know that. Yeah. Weeaboo Fightin'. <laughs> God, I hate. I hated when I hated how that how. The book of Weeaboo Fightin' Magic. I love the book. I hate. I hated the discourse because of how it made ever how it made everybody sound like fucking idiots. <laughs> But this is the I'm reason sorry, I say I it so ridiculously. I'm sorry, I didn't know that it was supposed to be that I was only supposed to be taking notes from Tolkien, Mo- Moorcock, and Lieber with all, with all my games. I'm sorry, I'm my, I'm sorry, I can't hear, I can't hear you, purist, over the sound of me running Alquadim in the '90s. But I, I think we're getting into the weeds again. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's kind of what happens. You get a bunch of nerds together. Yeah. <laughs> okay, like, back back to the sword that makes you lucky. I think fortune is an underutilized. Um, it's it's a concept with a lot of um, a lot more um, versatility than I think that it usually gets used as. I think that whatever you hear, this sword makes you lucky. You're like, oh, cool, my dice will roll well, and I'll win at games of chance. And it's like, well, yes, that too. But also, fortune is a thing that people spill blood for. <laughs> like, it's the, it's the being fortuitous in your life and having events conspire to help you is fucking amazing. It's not just, oh, hey, I drew a good card. It's, oh, hey, the king was about to behead me, but then had a change of heart, and now I'm marrying his daughter. Like, fortune fucking rules. And a sword that made you fortuitous would actually be goddamn awesome. You know? I mean, aside from the obvious, you know, utility of being the luckiest guy on the battlefield, which there could be all kinds of fun ways to manifest just having it around you and just being like second hand lucky and having good things happen to you man, that would be righteous like in, in just real life that would be really cool so it'd be hard but fun to make rules for a luck sword like very hard because you'd basically have to say like okay you as the gm are gonna have to freestyle the most fortuitous thing that could possibly happen in a given scene transpiring for this person every scene um, it'll be worth it because that's rad. I um I have one I have one dumb idea because when it comes to when it comes to luck, a lot I um luck is luck is very fi- luck is very fickle and I've often joked that when they talk about the luck of the iris they never say what kind of luck it is. And anyway, <laughs> it's just it's just luck. And it's not necessarily good luck. Because of because of that the idea. Because of that, the idea that the idea that I'm ha- the idea that I'm having is whether whether you want to have whether you want to have this as prana or as its o- or as its own resource like charges or something I'll leave I'll leave that up to you but um you can you can spit you can spend when making it when making a die roll while holding the weapon you can spend to uh to um to make it so to make it so that a number of die are not. Let's say you sp- let's say you spend a certain amount of prana and one of the di- one of the die is a nine, um, but and the way that you'd get this back is but it is um you can get is you can get again either prana or an exclusive resource by letting the by letting the GM sw- um do give that same treatment to the, to the die i.e. you can you you can use it to give your you can use it to the uh, like the lucky gods giveth and they taketh away, and it's up to you whether whether or not you're going to risk getting screwed over so you can get lucky later. I also do like a, a risk um, a risk management thing where you can just have something good happen. Um, 
you know, like just give yourself like a, a plus one rank to like attack events or something. And you can just have it happen. Just boom, small fortuitous things can happen to you. But as you do so, you just get this pool of dice, which are like the wheel and woe dice. At the end of the round, you, you roll them. And if they roll high, then it turns out that was just you being lucky. But if they roll low, it turns out that was you forestalling some bad luck that's going to rain down on you next round. So yeah, there's lots of fun ways to, to manifest that. Luck is just cool. <laughs> and, and a sword that makes you fortuitous and lucky. Like, we just thought of three distinct and interesting ways to make that rad. Um, I like the luck sword. There, wa there, was a, there was a Bushi school for the Scorpions that was all about luck. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that one. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since I played uh, L5R, but I remember, I remember it fondly. <laughs> I will say of that game, um, going... Um, any higher than the first, like, I don't know if they're called levels or what they're called, it's been a while, but going any higher than that, like, you get so competent that things become, like, a foregone conclusion really quickly. Um, so that was a, a drawback to the game. Um, but until that point, it was really fun. So the last of the, last of the basic ones we have is um, the staff. And we have... So the... the it is. It, it does have three tiers, although, although um, although one of them has two. One of them has two variants, depending on what the. Depend... Actually, you know what? I I can skip the demon staff for the same reason I skipped the, the other instance. Um. Original, it originally the starting staff was the golden star. If you had the limited edition, like I did, you could swap that out for Tien's justice. Um, and above above that was um fl was flawless, and above that was the demon staff. But um, I have a soft spot for Tien's justice because instead of a staff, it's a um monk spade. Yep. So the uh the the description for golden star, since we want to go through both the base and the the legendary edition here. Um, is kind of the same legendary status as uh, Fortune's Favor, but it's not a fortune weapon. It's just got that sort of same uh, pedigree. Mm -hmm. Forged under an auspicious comet, the staff was originally a gift for the water spirit of the Silkworm River. A young prince named Song Lo sought out to win the heart of the water spirit and had the staff created as a gift. He then convinced the great eastern serpents to fly him to the heavens, where he dipped the staff in the golden comet. The light of the comet dimmed, but the staff became more powerful than any before it. To this day, no one knows if Song Lo won the water spirit's heart, but there is no questioning the magnificence of the staff he created. <laughs> I like how we only have part of this legend, but we also have the staff. We know where the staff comes from, but not any other facts surrounding it. We know where the staff is from. We just don't know what happened to everybody else that had it. Maybe it's been that. so coveted that it's a uh, it's not so fortuitous for you to have it. Yeah, it might be bad that you have this, but here it is. I love legends like that. I love the uh, the legends that are equal parts sales pitch and dire warning. This you can have really this staff, but only if you're prepared for the gods to come down and kill you for it. Um. I would, I would probably, I would probably have it have a motif that the staff is like it is like a beacon. Like when, but go beacon. on for what? Like when, so, when somebody, when somebody, ha, when somebody, ha, um, Zan, do you remember? Do you remember when we when we talked about the level up barbarian and some of the um, some some of the narrative features that it got at higher levels? Yeah. Where you where you end up building a a fearsome or respected legend around yourself? Yes. The approach that the approach that I'm thinking is the is that Golden Star um, has a has a sim, has a similar thing where um, where as you as you grow in legend, um, fate ends up arranging arranging it so that you end up having meetings of people who have heard about the wielder of the staff and want to follow him or want to kill him. <laughs> I mean, that's a good idea, but how do we fit it into into Lone Wolf Fists? Thankfully, 
that's already a thing that happens in Lone Wolf. <laughs> Because uh, you do actually get like a reputation as you continue playing the game, mm -hmm. and you could, in theory, just have something that starts with a giant reputation and it immediately gives it to you as soon as you have it, and then you lose that reputation when you put it away. Um, so, to compensate for that considerable drawback, I would want it to be fucking righteous. Um, it should be like some kind of indestructible holy weapon with like balance and reach and just like basically just on its surface just really fucking cool and uh i'd probably give it one of those things like the weapons of the gods translation that i put in uh, uh for uh, blood and god's eye like i just give it like its own like prana pool and say here here's a bunch of kick-ass staff based techniques that it knows and it can just activate them whenever the fuck you want it to so you'd have a really badass mystical staff that you could just basically do anything with and just for the small price of all of the gods and all of the devils hunting you relentlessly for it. No, yeah. pretty pretty good trade. Um, actually, since you brought up weapons of the gods, there was one disadvantage that you that you could take that um might be good might be good to draw inspiration from, and that is um being a um ba a baleful human. You know. You know, the, drawing upon the story of the of the human who was so arrogant to think that he to think that he could go up and kick heaven's ass. Ah, uh, Fu. <laughs> oh, uh, Bellerophon from Greek history rode pe tried to ride Pegasus to Olympus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same basic idea. Like you think you're the Billy badass, and you're actually troublesome to the degree where heaven like is like, oh, okay. Maybe well, Zeus knocked him down just cause, just because Zeus is a dick. Zeus is like, fuck you. You don't get to come up to Olympus, you little mortal shit. But the approach the approach that I'm consider that I'm considering is to have some sort of tag where it is Im it is impossible to have it to have any sort of subtlety when you've got the when you're carrying this thing when you're fighting with this thing it is it is not subtle because you because you effectively ha are holding a staff uh, a staff made of golden light. Like it works pretty good actually. It, it kind of seems to work on the. Uh same logic that the the essence flare and exalted did where when you got really cool you'd have this giant iconic bonfire anima that was visible for miles around mm -hmm. and that must have been really awesome when they were fighting against titans um and they had to inspire the entirety of the world to fight with them but it was way less awesome in the age where they were all seen as devils and constantly hunted to extinction or or even worse having uh the uh, dragonborn exalted uh hunting them down instead yeah, it uh, became kind of a pain in the ass. A dragon-blooded exalted. Fuck you guys. Fuck those guys. As much as cool as cool as you are, um, you're still not as cool as say an alchemical. Alchemicals are the best thing that exalted ever made. So, it, I'll I'll die on that hill. The alchemicals are fucking great. <laughs> They're cool as hell. They're robots in disguise. Okay, we're, you're on a Transformers kick tonight. Like I, okay, so full disclosure, I was watching some YouTube earlier, so I was I was sick as hell today, um, and and I heard the uh, the uh, theme song that they did for the the Transformers movie 1986 pop up in one of them. I was like, one of the uh, videos I was watching, I'm like, I didn't put on Stan Lee's the, the Stan Bush's The Touch. What the fuck? And it was you like, touch. yeah, it was like Transformers coming back into theaters for only two. It was like September 26th and 27th, and I was just like. How do they know? How do they know I have a weak point for this fucking stupid toy robot commercial movie from the the year I was born? How could they know? But they do. They knew that I love that movie. I don't really like the rest of the Transformers that much. I love that movie. It's there's something about it. It's sincerely entertaining. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, right. So yeah, I'm in kind of a kind of a Transformers kick today. I love it. I love it. All right. So we've done <laughs> we've done the staff. We've done the the sword. We've done the dual swords. We've done the dual axes. Mm -hmm. The sword there is are, cool. Uh, there are three weapons added by the in style mod. Um, yep. The spear. We'll get well before we before we get to those. I think I think we should handle the. Um, I think we should handle the in style martial styles first. Well, um. I figure that since we're already on the weapon kick, we can we can do these now and then do the rest of the in style we did, mod. We did, to, we did top down with vanilla, so I I feel we should do top down with um 
in style. Okay. Um. So the the first one the first one that I have is, um, Leopard Fist, which is basically the is basically the brawler style that you that a lot of NPCs used, and not and now you and now you can use it yourself. In the, is it in any this good? particular thing, it says Leopard Fist is similar to White Demon in many ways. Both styles are rather slow, but have a long range and do huge amounts of damage. Why White Demon is taught at the most prestigious schools of the Jade Empire, while Leopard Fist is more likely to be seen in a tea house brawl, is unknown. Some of the White Demon Grandmasters claim, however, that their chosen style can only be can only be truly mastered if it is combined with the mastery of Leopard Fist. Huh. Because White Demon does mostly door kicker kicks. So what does it do exactly? Is it just punches or like? It's 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 largely a it is it is largely a um a pun a pun much in the same way that legendary strike is a is a punch is a kick based approach. Um, <laughs> leopard fi leopard fist is is very um is very punchy. Oh. Um, so, if I had to, if I had to make the comparison, it, Iron Palm was large, sweeping, slow movements that you're caught thinking of, people. You're thinking of, um, White Demon, not I, Iron Palm. No, I, White Demon was kicks. Iron Palm was large, sweeping arm motions. All right. Um, because White Demon is very straightforward, big door kicker kicks that carry you forward. Um. Compared to the legendary strike, which was standing still in one place and kicking and not carrying yourself at all. Um, looking at the actual Leopard Fist video, uh, Leopard Fist is punches in a much the same way uh, de uh, White Demons are kicks in a very long straight line with large wind up and damage. So if I had to make my, my own uh, pop culture reference here um it is like Jet Li fighting himself in the one uh, with the guy who fights in circles versus the guy who fights in straight lines <laughs> i remember that being a feature on the actual interviews on the dvd because i own that dvd <laughs> the guy who fights in circles versus the guy who fights in straight lines yeah uh the the two different styles Jet Li uses in that movie um one is a very, it's very, he just, he's going through everybody. So it's all a straight line. A lot of, a lot of what you see with um, some of the more fierce Wing Chun stuff would be seen there. Whereas the other is more uh, Tai Chi Chuan, uh, very flowing. There's a lot of circular motion. Uh, it's meant more for redirect than it is for straight going straight through people. So that's the 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 differences between Iron Palm and, and Leopard Fist is that Leopard Fist is essentially White Demon but your arms instead of door kick or kicks with your legs. White Demon but with your arms. I love that. I don't know. It, it almost sounds like something I want to do like a almost like a boxing style with. And I've always been kind of curious what I would do with boxing if I ever actually was like, what's the What's the version of boxing that should show up in the post-apocalypse with like super kung fu, like put behind it? And it's it's always weird because like a lot of times in fighting games they make the boxer, um, like the non-magic guy who's just like really good with his hands. <laughs> and I remember, um, I want to say both in Tekken and in um, in Street Fighter, it's just like it's just like some guy who throws really good punches. Um, even the cop in Tekken had like this magical circle kick that he can do, but not the boxer motherfucker just punched you. So like, that can be one of those things where like, I almost feel like there's not quite enough fidelity for it to work for like my game to make it work on the, the scale that it feels like it works best, which is that lower power tier. Mm -hmm. Um, because, and when you, when you really get into boxing, like there's a lot of like little techniques it has that make it kind of similar 
to the actual practice of martial art, like, you know, Kung Fu and Wuxi and all that stuff. Um, but it doesn't have the same mythology behind it. There, there's no real Taoist thought behind it. So you don't have, like, this idea that you can summon up your your chi and then use it to throw a punch that can, like, bend steel or something. Even though there is a lot of mythologizing around it in the United States, especially, um, you almost have to look at Rahi like it's... And there's some really like strict comparisons you can draw between like the Rocky training montages and like a Wuxia training montage, especially when you get to uh, to Rocky uh, punching all of communism to death. Which I was convinced that movie is good in a in a very long and very public spectacle of being worn down by my opponent's arguments. Uh, but I mean, like again. That guy, what was it, Drakov was his name? He had some kind of ridiculous name. Ivan Drago, yeah. Yeah, Drago. Like, he even sounds like an anime character. And he has, like, super science style, and he's this huge cartoon character that ignores the knockdown rule and weight class. Because that is basically the Rocky cartoon. Um, so, yeah, it it's not like you can't do cool stuff with boxing, but it's it's one of those things where you sort of have to choose where you're going to diverge from the reality of boxing and what you're going to mythologize. Um, honestly, I, I'd sort of want to watch... Th there's an anime that is just boxing, and I forgot Hajime, Hajime no Ippo. Yeah, Hajime no Ippo. I'd really kind of want to binge that before I before I like committed to making that style. If you, because... if you want something a little more truncated, um, Megalobox. Uh, uh, Megalobox is pretty good, yeah. But... Uh... I was about to say if you're if you're gonna try and uh try and uh, marathon Hajime no Ippo, um That's gonna take a while. That'd seventy-six like... episodes, a couple of films, a few OVAs. Twenty-five new episodes in twenty thirteen and twenty fourteen. I mean, Jesus. Then I, re I realize I realize I realize I realize who I am saying this given the, given the fact that I marathoned the enti the entirety of fairy tale in in three weeks that was insanity on your part. No, you can't blame anyone else. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, it only took me four days to marathon through all of Brotherhood. You're mad, man, man, <laughs> Uh I I am. Um, I'm not going to say how many days it took me to marathon Brotherhood because I can beat that score. Oh, I'm Jesus sure. I'm sure Christ. that you could, but could you? Do, but could you do that while while um while uh, while cycling? I don't know. I don't have a cycle at home, but uh, I certainly did it while working a full time job. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Brutal. Okay. Anyway, back to the back to the punching. <laughs> yeah. So because I, it it interests me, you know, doing a boxing style, because uh, you, you want to do defenses, you want to do offense, you want to do. I mean, the only so, thing I think of that it would be really so sold on solidly is it would require one or both of your arms. But, like, past that, like, I'd almost want it to be just a tactical toolkit style because boxing is a very complete fighting style. It's a little defense-based, but it has, like, you have a lot of um, strategy in it so that you could, you could do, like, more clever kind of techniques. You could do really powerful ones that are riskier. Honestly, like, there's a lot with boxing. Um... And, and a big thing that a lot of people seem to ignore, except for real boxers, uh, footwork, footwork, footwork. <laughs> footwork is excessively important to boxing. Oh, yeah. You, you, if you can't do the footwork, you can't box. And I know that because I can't do the fucking footwork, so I can't box. I got a uh, part of my physical training this last year was getting in what they call an agility ladder and trying to do the little dance that you do through that. Um, nope. Not, uh, not with my big clunky... Uh, fat guy legs did not work so yeah and it's it's so critical like because you we watch the boxers who are like legendary at it they they move like ball like ballerinas they're unbelievably light on their feet and being able to move like that in like a heartbeat is such a critical part of being able to fight because the way you're positioning your body and where it is relative to your opponent whether or not they actually have their guard up from that angle all those little tiny microns of movement are so incalculably important in the, the horrifically fast and deadly pace of boxing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it's, it's there's a lot more agility to it than people. And that might be like the Rocky effect. People think it's just about being able to take the most ridiculous ass kicking ever. And that is impressive. Don't get me wrong. But 
the idea is to not get your ass kicked. Yeah. And the idea is not to get hit. And to hit them. Um, it's funny you it's funny you bring up Tekken given given how um given how much of a pest Steve Fox can be. And because of the fact that <laughs> Since he, since boxing is his, since his particular style is boxing, instead of um, instead of doing kick, j instead of doing kicks with X and circle, they j they just had that as his um, duck and weave buttons, which means yep. that if and you're really good with him, you're not going to get hit. Yep, and then of course buttons are way tougher to deal with, as I recall yeah. in that game. And then of course, um, a as we discussed in uh, with uh, on Street Fighter, um. Kick buttons were just more punches, mm -hmm. uh, but the same the same was also in the, in reverse for the capoeira fighters. The punch buttons were just more kicks, because capoeira is all feet and dancing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think when it comes to leopard fist, um, you'd want to focus on, uh, like you said, the tactical part of the, of maybe some boxing, as well as. Uh, Maybe when it comes to their defensive options, it's less about tanking or blocking the hit and much more about avoidance. I think that's important. Yeah, because, I mean, everybody remembers the Dempsey roll from Hajime no Ippo. <laughs> yeah, I learned about the Dempsey roll from Hajime no Ippo. Dempsey uh, roll! Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the Dempsey roll. It doesn't make any sense, but hey, it works. Hey, it works. So that's one of those um, evolved because it's effective, not because it was a good idea, kind of things. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So the next style then is uh, monkey paw. Yep. I think. The ne yep. The next one is monkey paw. Um. And so, I, I, I watched the video on this one. Um, the the description is being based upon the movements and mannerisms of the monkey. Monkey paw utilizes acrobatics and lightning fast strikes to dispatch opponents before they have a chance to act. It's very fast, unpredictable, and deadly. And the the way that the the style actually works is your character crouches down to the level of a monkey, does forward somersaults like a monkey, leaps around like a monkey, and then when they're punching, it looks like a monkey kind of flailing their paws. There's also the f <laughs> there's also the fact that um perhaps the reason that it got some of these now some of these styles that are in the in style mod are based on un are utilizing unused animations. Or styles that got cut. Um, yeah. Monkey, P the creator of the mod had 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 sus suspects that Monkey Paw ended up getting cut because it may be kind of overpowered. Because you go because the forward roll still counts as damage, and then you do damage with your normal combos, so you can so that racks up quick, and you're ridiculously fast. Not and not to mention the fact that because of how low you are, half the uh. Half the weapon styles miss you in the game unless they use their their slow charged overhead hits. It's kind of like the reason why some why somebody would um, pilot an urban mech. <laughs> that's that's a good joke, monk. That makes me sad. No curb the urby. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's another one of those where like. It's kind of hard to find a way to, like, translate it directly, because, like, Lomo Fist, like, a lot of the time, and I, I find this a lot, is I'll, I'll I'll think of a style like that, because it's basically monkey style. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot about real-world monkey style, all the, the dodges and the feints and, like, the, the different ways the attacks manifest in this kind of unexpected direction. And there's a lot of, there's a lot with that, that I can use to flesh out the lower tiers of power. But it's whenever I start coming to those like higher tiers, I'm like, okay, but where does this become like how does this how does this escalate from here into something that's like kind of deific? 
Because like the the way the way the power tiers work is you have a lot at the lower power. Like the form gives you a lot, and then there's six novice techniques. So there's this huge smorgasbord of like punches and kicks that are like mildly more powerful and magical. And then everything after that is stuff like like Kamehameha waves and shit like that. Um, so like everything with expert is is like bordering far enough into magic that you're clearly doing like a magical kung fu attack and then the master level techniques are like the ridiculous upgraded super shredder version of that and then capping it all off is the tactical nuclear option technique the supreme technique and like so with monkey style again you've got to sort of pick your battles or it's like okay what element of this am i elevating into the the deific tiers like is do i want to like go and immediately uh grab elements from like the um the monkey king legend and say okay this is the this is the monkey style i want in the game this is like the iconic monkey style or do i want to do something where i'm taking one of my wonderful trash 90s animes and saying okay but what if it wasn't that what if it was instead like this character from this anime and like it, like Bosch is a really good example of that from trigon for for my gun style he was my guy with that because like, Bosch the Stampede does this great stuff where most of the anime, he's just fighting with guns really well. And you can you can use that to fill out the lower power tiers. But he also has clearly magical things that he can do. And, and his opponents have some, too. And so I just kind of made a, a conglomeration of Vosh, some of his bad guys, and Eat Man. And then I was able to cap that uh, whole style off with his ridiculous, like, uh, moon-blasting super gun. Yeah, that works really, really well. Uh, because it has that escalation in it but like is there a character like him for everything like i recently had someone in a playtest do um uh, spike spiegel and do like a real heavy kick base style and also do uh sniper stuff and he has like a he has like a, a motorcycle um that's based on spike spaceship uh so like and like you can do that in the game there comes a point when you sort of have to abandon that concept or, or evolve it in a way that it kind of takes it away from the original idea pretty significantly just because, like, the power scale gets injected into it. Um, so with monkey style, uh, movement, misdirection, um, uh, I definitely want a lot of unusual kind of tricks. I, I did sort of a monkey style uh, for the All Above Heaven thing I released, and there's more of that done, by the way. And there's a lot of roll dice and it will give you more stuff that it can do um, like there's one that's just like roll three more dice and if they make a set then something happens and if they don't something else happens i like injecting some chaos into the techniques themselves because that's that's unpredictable in a way that's actually really fun if things go your way it's it's kind of great and if they don't, well, then that's the risk that you took. And it, it feels good, you know? Uh, there's actually a, a monkey... Uh, it's actually chaos styles that the Monkey King has. There's actually a style he has where he can throw poop in someone's face. <laughs> and it's both a physical and social attack because it blinds them, and then it's humiliating and frustrating. It's th There's stuff like that you can throw into a monkey style that's really wonderful. Um, so, so yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know, like... Monkey style is one of those things where it's it's gigantic and iconic enough that I'd want to save it for all above heaven and it's more like purer form. Mm -hmm. And I'd want to think of what would be a fun post-apocalypse equivalent for it uh, if I were going to translate it over. If I were just going to do monkey style, um, I kind of did. You got all of Sun Wukong's powers. <laughs> so um, I, I, the styles I theoretically are going to be like cross-pollinatable. So you'd be able to do things like grow to huge size at the magical levels. Um, you'd be able to summon armies of clones of yourself. You could turn into things like trees. Um, these are all things that some Wukong could do, so you get to do all of those things. It's just what the style does. And then the lower 72. levels, of course. 72 transformations. You know why they have those, by the way? I looked into that. Because um, I was like, why 72? Why trees? What the fuck's going on there? Apparently, all of the Taoists who know those, the, the eight immortals, they can do that because once every, like, hundred years or so, Heaven is like, okay... Send forth the most furious things to destroy every immortal living on Earth. Just annihilate them. Leave none alive. So they turn into stuff like trees and rocks and shit so that that shit misses them once every 100 years. They continue being, well, you know, just basic, you know, lazy video game playing assholes for all eternity. Yeah. I, I know. The, the, the 72 transformations 
Um, you know then... 72 transformations, so you indeed are a Taoist immortal, sir? Yes. The Taoist, immortal, the, the Taoist immortals assigned to annoy the hell out of Monk for all of eternity. Does seem like pretty fitting, Monk. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> My work today is done. What do you mean? You didn't do anything. <laughs> what are you talking about? I am the one who inspired this. That's how Taoist immortals <laughs> Yeah, you back to that action, man. You ruined, you ruined the reference. You ruined it, and I hate you. Exactly! <laughs> anyway, um, the next, one on the, the next one on the list is Drunken Master, but we already um, covered it. it I think just, we did, didn't we? Yeah. Your it, in-style just makes it so that now uh, enemies drop um, the... The drunken style wine bottles, um, as well, mm -hmm. and you can carry one with you as well. Yeah. Um. Now the only th the only thing that the only thing that changes there's a few changes that the mod did. One is the fact that you level it up by using it. The more you the drunk the more you're drunk the more it advances. You um. And when and when you and it has a it adds a status effect called delirium where you've effectively leveled the style out completely, but it but um the moment you switch to another style you lose you lose it. Um. And you and um. You need you uh, do you you still need to keep drinking in order to, in order to keep using it. It's just that you can buy wine bottles from Henpeck Toe if you need be. So you can so you can use the style even without him. Um But the one after that know. is Black Mantis. Which there's already a Mantis style in the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um Black the Black Mantis style is a rare martial variant of the Heavenly Wave support style. Practitioners of the Black Mantis use unusual shifting stances and special hand strikes to target vulnerable areas of their opponents, oftentimes with devastating results. Opponents who suffer the full measure of the sequence of strikes are often left witless for a moment afterwards, as the disruption of their chi causes confusion. Delicious chi. Anecdote, when I used to play um, Legends of the Wulin, every time I would... Uh make a character recover chi, everyone would pluralize chi as cheese. And so everyone, like, every character constantly had cheese. Yeah. So much cheese. I produce so much cheese every round. Stupid, but a true fact of the past of playing that game. All right, so, so and it sounds cheese. like so much delicious cheese. I, I had hell cheese at one point because I'd become corrupted and could make evil cheese. Anyway, um... But, your chi I, I just imagine your block of cheese wearing horns and a pitchfork. One of the main <laughs> things with um, with Black Mantis style is do, is doing the full combo for the thing inflicts disoriented. And I, I'm, I'm a big fan of styles that kind of like they do more than just hit you. You know, I, I like the styles that kind of mess up your mess up your brain or, or give you status effects. I'll dis your orient. Wait, what? <laughs> Better than dissing my Occident, I guess. You'd rather I diss your East than your West? <laughs> okay. And which way I'm orienting my body according to the magnetic pole at the time. Anyway. Um, but yeah, the, the, the problem, of course, with stunning someone always runs into that same issue where... It's kind of all or nothing when you hit somebody with a status effect, you know? Um, some of the best status effects that I've seen were the ones in, like, 3.0 and 3.5, where, like, you'd have, like, bleed and stuff like that, where hitting them more would make the effect worse, and it was good to have on them, because it was consistently doing something for you. It effectively was adding to your DPS, which is a little bit dull. It, 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 was, functionally, it was functionally very good, because it sort of scaled with combat. Ugh. 
So like when it comes to disorienting people, that is at least a really kind of fun one um, because a disoriented person isn't necessarily they, they're less effective. They're more chaotic to become less effective. And when you add chaos to something, you add interesting scena- uh, scenarios that can transpire. So like, and I always think of it like, would this be fun for a player to have happen to them uh, in terms of like the whole group having fun with it? And would this be useful and fun for a player to inflict on an enemy? I think so. I think when it comes to disorienting, um, Sal functionally probably similar to the... I think we already made a Mantis style last time, right? It'd probably be really functionally similar to that, but it would it would swap out whatever trick that one had for for disorientation. And disorientation as an imbalance, I think it'd be really fun um, because you could... Um, could just kind of like switch around like you can make a little brief list as the gm of all the targets they could have and then just kind of like switch them around um and a nice easy way to do that would be like just to like roll a d10 or a d100 and then just count down and and wrap around giving equal weight to everything so um (laughs) and because my game has uh targetable like terrain and places you could have these really funny scenarios where like you hit somebody and they're disoriented so they see a stop sign as you and they go and like put it into a death grab and they're delivering their like like bad guy speech to this slowly dying stop sign that they're crushing the life out of everyone's just like standing around sort of awkwardly like does he does he think that's you oh god love moments like that um so yeah i I think the disorientation is the winning concept from that. Um, I, I like that. I, I may actually, I actually like that so much. I may have to write that down and put it in the game. I may have to make like a list of cool uh, status effects and put that in the game at some point. I mean, like I've already done a, a ton of that. So what's it going to hurt to do a little bit more? Yeah. Now the, the next one, which is, which, um, has a certain connotation for me as an L- as an L5R fan. Seven Thunders. The Seven Thunders is one of the oldest styles, and parts of its techniques can be seen in use all over the Jade Empire. However, these clumsy imitations are but pale shadows of the true power of this style, which is combining a chain of seven attacks that are designed to hit sensitive targets one after another in a certain order that will drop nearly any foe in seconds. The onslaught of thunderous strikes has been known to temporarily debilitate a foe unlucky enough to withstand all seven strikes and remain standing. You know, I haven't done a lot of styles that rely on combos hitting. That could be really interesting. I'd almost want to do a style where, like, as you learn more techniques, you just basically get, like, more or less like you have like one signature attack or kind of attack then as you learn more techniques it just pumps more interesting shit on that one attack um i liked the the way they did that for um infernals and exalted whenever they when they had infernals they had a lot of charms which instead of using essence and taking up your charm use for the turn they would just kind of alter charms you already had I thought that was really cool. I, I sort of feel like that should have been tech that they they used a lot more frequently and a lot earlier in that line, um, because it it means that you actually get more powerful as you uh, as you go on, and your your powers get more interesting and 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 rich and varied. So I kind of want to do something like that, where like you only sort of have this limited amount of attacks you can do with it, like the seven strikes. But as you learn each new iconic strike, you it does something new and you can kind of like combo it on the previous one. Um, especially because like, actually I really like that. It, it sort of throws the paradigm a little bit of how the fights work. But I would almost want it to be like, if you hit with your, like you have to throw your weak attack first, but if you hit with it, you can then purchase the next attack and they just have to kind of defend against them in sequence. So uh, it, it takes some thinking to make that really work. I bet I could do it. I bet I could pull that shit off. And that would be neat. A, a, a true combo-based style would be fascinating. And ultimately, if you get hit with all of them and live, like, I, I'm fine with it being some kind of stunning thing. Like, drains your effort pool or just makes you stun for the round or some such thing. Honestly, if they survive seven slams, each more deadly than the last, um, I almost feel like that was punishment enough. <laughs> like, so, and, and, kind of Loki and uh, and the Hulk situation. 
at the fir- yeah. end of the first Avengers movie. Yeah, kind of. Like that, you're you're Loki in that scenario. You're just getting smashed around. One of the things that uh, is a is a is a breaking point between like, TTRPGs and video games is that you don't like you're. It's all avatars and models and and animations and things like that in a video game. So the reality in which you hit somebody seven times and then they are stunned afterwards doesn't really map very well into anything that isn't a video game, you know? Like, it almost doesn't even map into the written word, because, like, it's hard to imagine someone getting, like, seven really good, solid, like, mystically powerful strikes in somebody, then after that, they're alive and intact enough that additionally being stunned was something you'd have to consider. Like, really? I don't... I don't think so. You're just like, uh, uh. yeah. I mean, like you're just so pulverized that, like, that is like your it, stun. Yeah, like that. That's the stun. If there's any left of your bleeding stump, it is stunned enough. Roses are red, violets are blue. Oh my wo, oh shinderu. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you were yeah, thinking well, it. Don't even lie to me. I was. We were all thinking it. Because we were all gentlemen here. Well, no, I, I am a man of culture, so I was thinking about the duet between Caleb Hiles and Iron Mouse featuring that line. Oh. <laughs> this is the part where everybody goes, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you have to link everybody to that now. Um, I am, aren't I? But next is... um. Is the one one of the styles whose description is mo- is one of my favorites from the mod, Divine Void. Um, this particular style was originally created by a modder named Lothario, and in style um, change changes the changes it slightly. But before I get to that, the description. The Divine Void style is named for the curious physical properties of spin of spinning forces around a vacuum as seen in water going down drains and winds circling a, vol- a tornado. And like a tornado, a master of this style whirls about and takes down his opponents with a constant circular flurry of spinning kicks, oftentimes wiping out entire groups of enemies by himself. See, my issue with like that... Th- no, this is, this is Chuck Norris the style. All you're doing is roundhouse kicks. See, the issue I have with that is, like, it sounds like you're describing one attack there, you know? It's like, as much as I could put a lot of effort into making a whole bunch more kicks, we already had a kick style, you know? And it it was, like, it was really good. There was a lot of effort put into that. But when it comes to, like, I will have a tornado kick, like, that's that feels like one move I'd to say, me. I'd say focus less on the kicking part and more on the... You're constantly moving in in circles, like constantly spinning. Whether it be whether it be spinning back fist or spinning kick or just spit or just spinning the dodge, you're constantly spit. You're constantly spinning and drawing up and drawing up winds around yourself because of all the all that um, force. Um, I have a wind style too. I'd probably use for this one. Actually, I haven't looked at that one style in a while. Let me pull that one up. Because it's got some really cool stuff in it. Also, I do actually have an attack. Um, let me see. Yeah, Hungering Vortex in um, the Berserker style of all things. Which is, yeah, you whirl your weapon and it makes a vortex. And then everyone in it gets just torn to shreds. So there is actual um, there is actual precedence for this exact kind of move. Let me see. Where's my where's my wind stuff? Because the wind style is also all about movement and air bending, effectively. Let's see where I, here it is. Cloud catching maneuver. And it also has a lot of kicks in it. Actually, I might just use the. I hate to be that guy to be like, oh, I designed this, but I, I sort of already did. I mean, when it comes to like a lot of movement and being able to control wind and movement and distance being an as- aspect of the style and. Atta- like physical attacks that originate far away, like uh, flying kicks and such, like being something that's an important aspect of the style. That's divine breath. Like that's what that style does. I probably, uh, I probably retool divine breath and add a couple, uh, 
couple of area attacks that suck people in, like the Hungering Vortex. And I might just call it a day from that one. Um, I take out the, the airbending aspect of it. I think that... I, I, I don't know that the kick base style necessarily invites like the kind of fine control that being able to command air magically would give you. Um, being able to make like air based attacks would be kind of cool. Doing like a, a like a sonic boom thing like Guile, where like you kick so hard that there's like this like razor edge that slices to the wind and hits the hits the opponent. Okay, I'll give you that. Um, but that feels more like an individual attack that uses air, less like being able to magically command it. Yeah, it's like I said, like I said, it is it is on the tricky end of things. Um, the it is a little tricky, but I, I it's kind of fun that we already have stuff that works for it. <laughs> I'm very next proud of that. One is Willow. See, the, the Willow style isn't the most damaging style, but what it lacks in raw power it makes up for in tenacity. Like the Willow Tree, an expert in this style uses flexibility to overcome an opponent's defenses, and once inside its guard, the whip-like successive strikes of this style wear down an opponent and finish him. The tall, leaping power attack of this style covers a great deal of ground and can strike at a foe who's surrounded by guards. Yeah, see that that one I I feel like is a lot more robust because you got a lot going on with that one. You've got jumping, you've got the attacks which have like they're less about kinetic force and they're more about a cumulative effect. That's neat. Um, you have this idea that there's this kind of like barrier of your opponent's defenses and you can sort of like worm your way under it. That's really nifty, um, and it kind of lends itself to being a little sneakier too. It feels like more of a subtle kind of assassin slash infiltrator kind of style. So that's one that has like a lot of robustness to it. You know, you could have moves. Um, and I'm, I'm interested. The thing that strikes me about that one that I want to explore, there's, there's two parts of it that really kind of jump out to me. First is the idea of like there being this, this barrier of defensive capability that your opponent has and finding a way underneath the little edge and getting into this this vulnerable place where their defenses are not no longer viable, and not necessarily ending the fight there, because like it, it the other thing that interests me about this style is the whole idea that you have these like lashing blows. So I'd want to kind of link those and say that you have a kind of attack in this style, maybe unique to the style, which either can't be defended against or has a big surcharge to defense against it, or otherwise gives you a big disadvantage if you try to use a classical defense against it, and it. It's linked to attacks that don't do a lot of damage, but they do something else. Like maybe they like set up some kind of like internal disharmony by giving in uh, like uh, aggravation imbalances, or maybe they make it harder for them to spend prana, or maybe it just makes them less effective against you in the future, or it has some kind of cumulative effect like that. Um, that's interesting to me. Like a style that sort of wears you down from these unexpected angles and in unusual ways. That's that's fascinating. That that deserves to have its own its own mechanics dedicated to it. I feel. Uh, that that cover that covers all of the all of the um martial styles. There are... <laughs> Getting tired. How many more have we got left? Um. There are th there are three weapons. Um. One one magic style, which is Blizzard. Um. You know. Which is bit, which is bit, which is um basically water, basically water and air, water and air magic. It's it's exact, it's exactly what it's it's exactly what it sounds like. Um, I have a water bending style that is water plus ice, so I think we got that one covered. Yeah. Um. The only. As far as as far as tr as far as transformation, um, what the main thing that changed with that it was changing um storm dragon into instead of it being a support style it's it's the energy style where it drains focus instead of dealing damage basically the focus brother to um spirit thief. So all things all things cons considered since um. 
sense sense with a lot of with a lot of the magic styles there's not there's not a whole there's um it's essentially each an elemental manipulation um we more or less have that covered so i think the only i think the only things left that um that would that would be to co that there would be to cover would be the three um would be the, would be the three weapon weapon styles the first the first one is the spe is the um spear um called moonlight spear called moonlight actually i have a spear style too let me pull it up real quick There's something about the spear called moonlight yeah. um there in in the game there's a lot of enemies that use spears as a weapon but you don't but you don't get one um not a bunch of assholes spears are the best but, the monk would not disagree with you mm -hmm. and the king of all weapons yep. i'm sorry i'm still partial to great swords that are bigger than me i mean like some of us have issues with our fathers some of us don't and that's just the line let's move on I mean, you're not wrong either. I do have issues with my <laughs> okay. deceased sperm donor. And it says, now, um, oh, moon moonlight. It says moonlight is a simple, easy to learn weapon style. It does less damage than other weapon styles, but it is quick and allows you to keep your opponents at spear's length. The one aspect that may make it attractive to masters of other weapon styles is that it does not require focus. Um. Then the up the upgraded version is a halberd, which is a, is a, was them was them repurposing the um the model for the flawless staff at second level and rep and replacing that with the um with Tien's justice and making the third level version the uh, demon staff. Um, the approach the approach that it has is it has the uh, it has the longest range of any we of any um, weapon, but it does but it does not attack very wide. All of its attacks are thrusts. Well, except for, except for the area attack, but that's with every, but that's with every um, style. Hmm. Interesting that. Actually, um, because I did a spear style in the game, Mind Above of Steel, which is based on um, Divine Powdered Long Strokes, which is a Legends of the Wulin style. I'm a little bit obsessed with Divine Powdered Long Strokes. Uh, it's really cool conceptually, and it it sees the spear kind of like this weapon that allows you to control the foe's movements. Like the idea being that you can thrust it and move it in a way that you completely make any option aside from the one you want the foe to take. Death. Um, and I love the idea of it being this inescapable maze of strategy that you have over them. So this style sounds like a much more straightforward kind of spear style. Um, it, the the thing about the Chinese spear especially was that it really was a complete tactical weapon. It gave you range, it gave you thrust power, absolutely, but it also gave you a lot of slashing power. And in addition to that, they usually had these little tassels or feathers on them that kind of made it confusing as to where exactly it was. So there was this sort of um, psychological element to it as well. So they were fucking on fire. And I wanted to capture that with, with uh, um, my spear style. When you, when you limit that, uh, I feel like that focus should have a trade-off. Um, Maya Web of Steel has a lot of stuff where you kind of trap the opponent. And I think this would be the opposite. Um, instead of being trapped, it should be more like as long as you have a good solid place to stand, you can just do this amazing outpouring of directed force at one opponent. Um, so what I might do is actually make it a lot more deadly attack-wise for the same cost than other things, and I would have it rely on its reach to be able to hit opponents so that you didn't really necessarily have a lot of defensive options in it. Uh, because when someone's under your, your strike radius with a spear like that, if you're using it in that way... You, I mean, like especially if they have a sword or a shield or really anything they can use to cut or push stuff aside, you have a staff you can't use very effectively, and you're holding it in a way that doesn't really allow you a lot of defensive options. So if they get close to you, they can they can kind of kick your ass. So I might also put in some stuff where you can move and kind of like bound out of the opponent's uh, reach and get them back to um, the sappy stab range. That's a little dull, I guess, um, but like. That's that's the thing about it. Like with the spear style that I made, I, I had to think like, okay, 
well, conceptually, what do spears do at the highest level? And so I stole a bunch of the the crazy weeaboo bullshit magic from Ronin Warriors, um, and I was like, it does that. And then I stole some Final Fantasy uh, Blimit Breaks and used those too, uh, because hey, like, hey, if you, um, if you steal, if you steal from one, it's plagiarism. If you steal from a dozen, it's research. Yep, <laughs> that's that's hopefully true and in no way legally actionable. That's my prayer. Um, yeah. So I again, we're running into that same kind of issue where. I don't know that uh, Jade Empire necessarily has the same kind of scaler that uh, Lone Wolfist has, uh, where like it's pretty much content to have you hit really hard with your with your sword or spear or whatever over and over again. It's not concerned with being able to throw the spear so hard you can pierce the veil of heaven and summon a dragon or some shit. That's Actually, I should write want. that shit down. That's really cool. You know, that's that's. Uh... <laughs> That's definitely something that's been done, but it's always nice and uh, and uh, and uh, fashionable. Mm -hmm. Throwing a spear to, to to throwing a spear to pierce the veil of heaven and let down a dragon. Um, I can think of another thing that does that, though it isn't a dragon. Such as when Odin threw Gungnir into the clouds to that, to. That was the exact visual I was thinking about. <laughs> We, we've now gone on to the ultimate weeb wavelength where all our thoughts are one. Yes. Join the hive mind today! <laughs> um, hey, at the, at the very... At the very... At the very least, we're not going to be screaming join us like a bunch of deadites. Yeah, you'll just want to join us naturally because all of our stuff is cool. <laughs> um, In fact, okay, uh, so... hail to the king, baby. <laughs> so oh, God. that covers the spear slash halberd. The next one, and this is this is a in, this is a interesting setup, is um Death's Razor, which is the weapon style that Death's Hand used in the game. Which um, the AI didn't know how to use effectively, and thus made the uh, Death's Hand fight a joke. Yeah, oh, that's which too is bad. Un which is unfortunate because you look at Death's Hand and you're thinking this is this is the guy who's supposed to make you shit yourself. Aww. And then you beat the ever living hell out of him way too easy, and you're like, eh, okay. <laughs> However, the the uh, the in style mod that adds this in and allows you to use it, um, and the demonstration video on the in style mod page shows that had the AI been anywhere near as competent as a player, you might have actually been a little boned. Oh man! For for what it's worth, um. Here is Death's. That is an image of Death's hand I just shared in the council for you. Pull that up here. It's essentially a. Uh, it's a paired dagger and guandao, is what it looks like. Yeah. And uh, most of your regular attacks are made with the dagger at the beginning of the combo, though. Then you start sweeping the guandao into the into the uh, into the combo. <laughs> But the area attack and the power attack are all initiated with the larger sword. <laughs> so you can do some really uh, crazy shit with it. Uh, especially considering that, like the spear, it doesn't use focus, except if you use your slam or your focus uh, slowdown. Mm -hmm. The focus clarity, I believe it's called. And so you have a lot more to use your focus for instead of it constantly draining as you swing. It's a fun little, cool uh, style. Mm -hmm. fun little style, yeah. It sounds like there's a lot of stuff going on in that style. There is. <laughs> it's probably the most uh, fleshed out weapon style you never get in vanilla, because it is the weapon style for a boss. I love that. Well, I... Although his Gundal is is the model that's used for the demon sword for some reason. Well, except except in um, except in in style, it's a completely different model. Yeah. One that wasn't used oh, in man. vanilla. Gondo. Gondo. Holy shit. Gondo are cool things. swords. Yeah. Uh, commonly, you, in in many many um pop uh, pop culture and pulp fiction uh, Chinese stuff. For Guandao, um, you'll see like rings in the back of them. Mm -hmm. Usually, 
seven or nine rings. Yep. And uh, not all Glondo are spears. Some are just swords. Uh, though they can be used as spears. Uh, some of the more famous Guando are spears where the sword unscrews. Oh, that's fucking cool as hell. Yeah, that's, uh... And Guan Yu had one, didn't he? The... I'll look it up real quick, because yeah. I know that motherfucker had one of these things. Yeah, this is this is what uh, what some Guando look like. Mm -hmm. A green dragon crescent blade, a.k.a. the frost fair blade. Jesus Christ. The idea that during a battle in the snow, the blade continuously had blood on it. The blood froze and made a layer of frost on the blade. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Ooh, god. And, cool shit. and many Guando can separate. Many, many Guando. Um, it's kind of a thing that they separate into the, the spiky lower half and the swordy upper half. Yeah, Legends of the Wulin had this as its own weapon. Um, it didn't, like, because it's it was iconic enough in the fiction that it needed its own stuff. Yeah. So here's here's another uh, really fun looking Guando, and you can tell that rings are supposed to be in the back, but they haven't been put into the sword yet. Oh yeah, I see it. Yeah. I love. Like, don't get me wrong. There are weapons that are cool from all over the world, but some of the more esoteric weapons in 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 just the East East Asian area itself are. Fucking cool. Yeah, they're just fucking cool as hell. <laughs> God damn, that rules. Yeah, I... Oof. I kind of just, <laughs> just want to make this a magic item on its own. Uh, and I, you're... There's no lack, you know, of, of mm -hmm. material for inspiration with those things. And then here's just a guando that's just made as just the sword. God, that's sexy as hell. It's got the dragon yeah. on it. Love that shit. Yeah. If we well, kill somebody, we can kill them in fucking style. <laughs> I mean, it is called the Jade Empire in style mod, so... Yeah, there you go. It's a very stylish way to murder a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Oh, Christ. I almost want it just to make you cooler just because you have it. People are like, god damn, that guy rules. Because I love the idea that its reputation is so fearsome... And you just look so goddamn radical that that like that is an element of its advantage that it gives you. You know how you know how I said that the gold that the golden st that the golden star staff is not subtle. Mm -hmm. I feel that death's razor should also not be subtle, but in a in a significantly different way. Um. In the in the way that there is a whole lot of red there's a whole lot of red all over the all over the place after a fight. <laughs> or to put, or to put it another way, hold, being getting in a fight with this thing has the has an effect not too dissimilar from having the bloody mess perk in Fallout. Yeah, actually, I kind of love that. Also, well, I would probably have this thing like at the end of every round where it spills somebody's blood. A, it would be it would be everywhere. Like that would just have to be an element of hitting them, as if you describe the blood just spattering all the fuck over the place. Um, and B, I would make that make a building fear and balance people that are fighting it. So like every round, they're more terrified of this thing because it's just doing this horrific amount of damage to them. Well, if you're going to call a weapon Death's Razor, you better fucking deliver. <laughs> yeah, this thing would definitely deliver. Mm -hmm. um, actually, this is one of those things where I would want to do um, something like bleeding rules for it. Um, there, uh, there are rules for mortal wounds. And they don't necessarily have to start mortal. The idea is that they just get worse over time. I think that would be the only kind of wound this thing delivers. Like, when you hit with it, it does whatever it normally does. And also, it just tags that with, oh yeah, all your wounds are going to get worse every single round as you just drip blood like a sieve. Mm -hmm. Between those two things, that's pretty fucking good. Um, actually, that's that's subtle and strong and iconic right there. That's That's not too bad for a... Or framework. Yeah. And of course, of course, at the of course at the end of it, it looks like an it looks like an average day for the Doom Slayer. <laughs> um. It might be might be the Doom Slayer's preferred weapon when he's time traveling, because you know they're gonna have to eventually do that. He's traveled to hell. He's traveled to heaven. 
The only thing he le le left to do is to travel in the past and prevent it all from happening in the first place. Or just go like the um, the God of War way with it, where you just travel into other people's heavens and hells. Don't. No, wait, never mind. Do give id ideas. Thank you. Yeah, it's just, it's just a series <laughs> of games. The Kratos method. Mm -hmm. um, the last weapon that I, ha that I have on the list is the is the morning stars, which are well a pair of morning star a pair of um, morning stars, just with just with no chain. Well, and they they should they should really be called the morning stars with a U in there, mm -hmm. because uh, because the way this weapon works in the game is it makes you like the ghosts in the game, so you're immune to support styles and weapons. Oh, and neat. these and these morning stars are the only weapons in the game that can hit other ghosts. So it puts you on the edge of life and death, and then uh, keeps you there. <laughs> and the only place to get them is from a blacksmith literally in the w land of the dead. I mean, like, that seems like it describes a thing that could just literally be translated um, uh, into Lone Wolf Fist, because, like, those those are all things you can do with, uh, with different spirit ranks. So... Yeah, I, I don't see why it wouldn't just do that exact thing. <laughs> I also like the idea that they're um, that when you get weapons that come from a given plane of existence, that they kind of uh, sort of bring a little bit of it with them. So uh, you can go to hell technically in Lone Wolf Fist. It's just like the it's Naraka. It's like Eastern Hell. So being able to go into uh, to the version of the afterlife and get some cool ass uh, some cool ass morning stars. And then bring them back with you and beat up ghosts and also be kind of ghostly yourself. Yeah, that scans. It doesn't even require that much actual like translation into mechanics because most of the mechanics, such as they are, are just descriptions that allow you to do those things or disallow you from doing those things. So, yeah, those those are really easy to translate. <laughs> Hooray! I I love um. This is still me on the Guandao kick. Uh, this this <laughs> stand of three different spear types. You've got your normal leaf blade spear, you've got a guandao, and then you've got the feng chong qi, which is a a very specific type of, of halberd in Chinese uh, history. And the feng chong qi is a... Uh, it's, it's really good. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It makes well, me I mean, happy. Like, there's, there are so many kick-ass untapped weapon types the judge's brush and then the the sun and moon crescent and like there's just shit loads of the, the water spreading knife like there's all kinds of fucking awesome ass that was some that was something i was trying to i was trying to make clear when i when i when i had tweeted out a while back that you don't need to do sword and board absolutely not especially whenever you're 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 conceptually towing yourself into things like wuxia Man, don't limit yourself. I, I know that sword and board is much like boxing. It's tried and true. It does work. And there's a reason people like it. It's a comprehensible paradigm that has, like, it's different kind of modes. It's also boring as fuck. It doesn't have to be. But, like, you come to Wuxia for something different. And it delivers like a motherfucker. So let it deliver, you know? Especially when you're designing. Like, let, let that deliver. Like the women who kill people by using their zithers. Yeah, or their hair. They, pl they, play, they play a zither, and then it kills your soul, and you die. <laughs> Turns out your soul's attached to you. There are some women who, who, when the zither's song fails against the main character, they tear the strings off and start using them as, uh, as wire weapons. And you're like, see... Even when all else fails, even you result to resort to a physical altercation in the end. <laughs> hey man, whatever works. It's not that you kill them well, it's that you kill them. Yeah. Then, then again, oh, wasn't times. there that wasn't there that gag that became a meme in in um late in later Fist of the North Star? The whole, how can you throw how how can you call dynamite throwing a martial art? Hey, as long as it works. <laughs> as long as it works. <laughs> I actually put that uh, joke into my description of dynamite in Lone Wolf Fist, so you're welcome, everyone. 
Um, is that everything? Did we do all the styles? I th I believe that I believe that co that covers everything. Since we said we're not doing um transformations. Uh, if, yep. If wind up getting a faction of furries in this game because the, there's still some backers who haven't chosen other factions going to manifest. So might happen. We may have to revisit new the transformation styles for all the furries out there. But in any other circumstance, I think we can call this one reasonably complete. Yes. I be I believe so. Thank thanks for um thanks for putting up with splitting this into two splitting this thing into two parts. Uh th thanks for putting up with my like crazy schedule. I always do. I was uh put way too much on my plate, so and I got sick this time, so this has been uh, it, it's if, been a, an interesting challenge. If you've seen it's... what my calendar looks like, you'll know why I can't pass judgment on that, Joel. <laughs> yep. Or I the fact that you, that you carried the flame for Swayze for 2 months, bad luck. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that that is that that uh, interview finally saw the light of day, which is good. Um, mm -hmm. But c you could say that numerous of the weapons that we've seen at the tail end of this uh, of this particular exploration are all way cooler than the base weapons. Yeah, just the. I can I can I can say I can say that. Um, and what when it I do want to make clear that even if you're not doing wuxia, or so, or something like that, at least at least take into consideration um, doing something other than doing something other than sword and board because sometimes you have to ask the question of am I doing this because it's efficient or am I doing this this because it's what my character would want to do and yeah sometimes those two things intersect, but. That doesn't mean that they ha that doesn't mean that they have to. And uh, I just like the fact unless you're doing unless you're doing grim and gritty shit. There's no where where you're trying to go uber realism, which let's which let's face it is not going to be all that likely. Um, there's no reason there's no reason to. Yep. And, and, uh, and remember that a lot of the cool weapons that you see that look flashy were actually used and were extremely horrifically effective. In a specific historical circumstance, do a lot of research. Don't limit yourself. You know, th there's a lot of reasons why weird, cool, fun weapons were used in unusual ways. Let that creativity guide you. I'll put I'll put it this way: one of the one of the greatest jokes I ever heard in any in any gaming forum was somebody lamenting how was something was someone lamenting how ridiculous the uh, how ridiculous some some of the some of the characters weapons and storytelling concepts were in console style rpgs and i immediately replied with bitch you were playing might and magic last week <laughs> but uh there's there's also the fact that you know within our systems we're making it so that these other weapons are fun and viable uh, within Lone Wolf Fists, you've already come up with numerous ways that these weapons could work differently from other weapons you already had established, just to make them fun and viable. And over in our FF Legend, just a, a small shameless plug here. Uh, shameless. <laughs> hey, gotta gotta get the shameless plug in somehow, right? Um, My. Um, you may you may want to go into the skinny because we have we haven't we haven't fully delved into what that pro what that project is on this channel this is true we haven't ff and legend I'm, is uh is be really distracted by the fact that you said it's a shameless plug like in this day and age that is a very different connotation also you, <laughs> also, you have no shame <laughs> yeah you can't shame that which is shame which, which is shameless um Dow of shamelessness but ff legend is a is a project that was based off of a uh an idea from one of our class uh, warfare episodes about creating uh, Final Fantasy or equating Final Fantasy classes uh, with the Legend system, and we are expanding upon that in such a fashion that we're actually creating a system that cribs notes from everywhere, as uh, as Monk said earlier. Steal from one, it's plagiarism. Steal from many, it's it's research. Uh, and it does the core. Uh, I the core conceit about the character creation is for, uh, a lot like Legend System, the track system. 
that these tracks are the jobs and the four core classes are are where you could reasonably settle the jobs into mm -hmm. the the idea of even sword and board being viable is in our game because we're going to make it so that shields are a weapon so you know look forward to that yeah you want to shield bash somebody with the edge of your shield do it see how much crushing that does x3 did it that way too um so shields are a weapon I, they're a little more interesting that way bucklers especially um as someone who who did some buckler fighting in in the SCA heavy stick fighting community uh nobody expects you to punch with the buckler and nobody expects you to punch with the edge of the buckler and then they call you a cheater and then the judges are like no i always yeah, trust I've me always had, i've always work. had a soft spot for those bit for those big ass spartan shields <laughs> yeah those are great. yeah those are pretty good too, and they make great door knockers. Knock knock, who's there? Oh, it's uh, your death. Stab you while you're on the ground. Bye. <laughs> I think that's about enough for me tonight. Though well, I'm gonna go back and get some fever sleep. Yeah, you you get you get some rest, and we'll, and it's gonna it's gonna be around that time to to um, wrap up. Um, I won't be I will not be interviewing Burning Star Games tomorrow, or rather or rather on the ninth. Um, Outside outside circumstances forced us to reschedule. Um, I will be doing a double a double header regarding um, reg re in regard in regard to the in regard to the Marshall style exploration with Dave Sil with Dave Silva, and then of and then of course there will be the Valley of the Judge where we get to the next class in our list for the for Heavens and Heresies, which is the Disciple. I.e. the i.e. the monk and all but name. There's a there's a there's a monk song I want to sing and he won't let me. Well, shock the monkey doesn't count. Ah <laughs> uh, no. Good I, night, uh... everybody. But until <laughs> then, on behalf of the good brothers, present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.